First of all, we have Dr. Daniel Demizio, who is an assistant professor of medicine at New York Presbyterian Columbia University Irvine Medical Center which is CUIMC for when I start speaking about it again, where he serves as the director of CUIMC Vasculitis Center, of which he led development in 2020. Dr. Demizio has a particular interest in medical, in medical education and additionally serves as the co-director of the musculoskeletal course for the medical students at Columbia University, Vagelos College of Physical, Physicians and Surgeons, as well as the course director for the rheumatology elective at CUIMC for internal medicine residents. But before we speak about GCA, it's important that we talk about polymyalgia rheumatica, which I'll refer to as PMR. Um, although PMR is nearly two to three times more common, there's a lot of overlap between the two and they frequently occur together. Uh, in terms of co-occurrence, approximately 10 to 20% of patients initially diagnosed with PMR will eventually go on to develop features of giant cell arteritis. Similarly, about 20 to 30% of patients who were initially diagnosed with giant cell arteritis will go on to or have concurrent symptoms of PMR. Although it's still pretty debated, uh, there is a frequent co-occurrence that we see here. And this has led a lot, met, uh, led a lot of uh, experts to think, you know, is this one single unifying disease? Do they exist on, you know, a spectrum? But that is, you know, to be determined still. In terms of epidemiology, PMR, polymyalgia rheumatica, is a disease primarily affecting older individuals, typically older than 50 years of age. And it has an incidence of about 110 per 100,000 Northern European Caucasians, but at a higher rate in those Northern Europeans. Comparatively, it's uh, less commonly seen in some other ethnic groups. For example, as shown here, in uh, individuals of Japanese descent, the incidence is less than two per 100,000 individuals in Japan. So varies widely um, and still fairly rare. So what is PMR and how does it present? Well, the classic features of PMR are that of intense pain and stiffness of the musculature, particularly a pain and stiffness in the shoulders and the hips. Classically, PMR presents symmetrically or bilateral, affecting both sides, the right and the left side, though it may start asymmetrically, meaning it might start on one side and then bilateralize. In some cases, there might be concomitant arthritis, meaning it might have some pain in the peripheral joints like your hands or your wrists or your ankles or your feet. And importantly, in differentiating it from myositis, which is an inflammation, an inflammatory condition of the muscles, muscle strength is typically normal in PMR. So patients might you know, report some subjective weakness due to their pain. They might say, oh, I'm having trouble lifting my hands above my head, getting things out of a cupboard or getting up out of a chair or, or getting up out of off the to toilet bowl, for example. But by and large, pain and rigidity and feeling stiff are, are the major predominant uh, complaints. And that's kind of driving this reported weakness. And on exam, when a, when a physician examines the patient, they'll often note that although there is this subjective weakness, they really, you know, the muscle strength is, is quite preserved. In addition to this, this pain, um, constitutional symptoms or systemic symptoms might be present, such as fatigue, weight loss, malaise, low-grade fevers, and uh, all of those might be present in addition to the pain. Unfortunately, there's no confirmatory test. There's no single blood test that confirms PMR. It's a clinical diagnosis, meaning it requires kind of the whole picture, how the patient is presenting, their, their presenting features, their labs. But lab-wise, there are some tip-offs. And by and large, um, the elevated inflammatory markers you're hearing me talk about today, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or the ESR, and the C-reactive protein, the CRP, are very characteristic. They're often very elevated in PMR. And again, in differentiation from the myositis, that inflammatory muscle condition, the CPK, the creatine phosphokinase, and other muscle enzymes like ALT and AST, other tests that, that show if there's inflammation in the muscles, those would all be normal. And that helps the physician realize, okay, this is an inflammatory condition, but not necessarily a muscular condition. 
In terms of treatment, uh, this is again a clinical diagnosis and empirically a brisk and profound response to modest doses of prednisone are fairly characteristic in what we see. So the physician will often give a dose of 15 to 20 milligrams of prednisone and usually that, that provides a pretty quick response. In a lot of ways, PMR is one of my favorite diseases to treat because patients go, start feeling better pretty rapidly typically. They're often going from feeling pretty awful, often for like weeks or months, just feeling really run down. And then you give them just you know 15 to 20 milligrams of prednisone and, and bam, they, they feel better within a couple of days. Not always, but, but that's typically the, the kind of course there. And it's always gratifying to have these patients feel be better really quickly. Um, the course, unfortunately, is, is a, a, a rocky one. So the steroids are tapered over months. So it's not like a one and done. These steroids have to be tapered pretty rapidly because PMR can and does tend to flare or relapse. And the steroids, again, are started at 15 to 20 milligrams, then tapered down gradually over the course of a couple of weeks to months. Um, pretty gradually at first, I would say about two and a half milligrams every you know, two or four weeks. And then once they reach kind of around 10 milligrams or so, then you go even slowly. And patients are on prednisone, you know, for several months at this point, trying to get them lower on the prednisone and ultimately off ideally.